main drivers and kind of a large part of, of my role as a, a now political consultant within the Trust is, is around climate change and nature recovery. Um, we have an ambition uh, as an organisation to plant um, and establish 20 million trees across our land holding. Four million of those are in the southwest, which is where I'm based. Um, and we, we're looking to establish um, and, and restore carbon rich habitats and things such as wetlands and, and peatlands as well. And another part of what we're trying to do is, is increase the ability of our places to adapt to the impacts of climate change, not just our landscapes, but our, our buildings and our gardens and, and other elements as well. And the real drive is um, focusing on, on nature and, and for people. So some of the challenges we're facing um, as, as archaeologists with the Trust, and there are around 20 or 25 of us um, covering the, the whole um, country, so we're dealing with kind of small elements of development led archaeology where we have to, to follow um, stand, standards and guidance through um, the planning process. So and we're some of us are actually carrying out that work ourselves as well. But we're also being innovative in, in research um, in different projects. And obviously, as I said, we're, we are governed by some standards and guidance. The main challenges or risks that we're facing um, in the work that we're, we're really Unfortunately, and as we, we see in development led archaeology so often, archaeology is seen as a blocker. And unfortunately, I've heard over the last day or so that you know, it's still being seen as an issue, and we need to start communicating it as an opportunity um, just as a sector. But I know many people are. It's just we just need to, just need to really drive home um, that kind of message. And by that, you know, we, we have that challenge of being able to communicate how and why this works. Whether it is through development led archaeology or, or for nature recovery, um, and the benefits of the work that we're, we're looking to carry out. And I feel like I'm going to be repeating a lot of what was said yesterday and, and themes that will kind of run through um, the rest of the conference. But the biggest thing, the biggest challenge we have, and same with um, development led archaeology, is being at the table first and being part of those conversations when, um, when projects are being and ensuring that our and heritage are actually being considered and can be part of that development process. As I said before, a large part of our work at the Trust falls outside of the, uh, the scope of the planning process, so we don't have the NPPF to fall back on to support us for, and justify why we're asking for, um, for work to carry out. Um, we're also um, taking quite a lot of work in unfamiliar landscapes, so they're not our working on a huge scale, obviously you know, the developments and infrastructure projects that are working on large scales as well. There's one um, estate particularly that I'm working on at the moment that's thousands of hectares and it's going to completely transform the landscape. We're also, as with everybody else, working with a range of stakeholders, our, our internal colleagues, external colleagues, funders and, and the general public. And we're, we're, as with everybody, trying to better Opportunities in the work that we're doing. Um, we as archaeologists have an amazing toolkit, we have an amazing base of information from the past that can help us inform how future landscapes can work. Um, and we're driving, you know, we're acquiring new data all the time um, through geophysics, LIDAR, all sorts of um, non intrusive assessments, paleo environmental assessment, especially for our sort of peatland and, and wetland restoration, and we're creating One of the, the kind of simple things there is you do the geophysics once on a site, you might have to do an ecology survey three or four times over a year, and actually the cost, we're trying to kind of um, justify that. It's also creating all that data is also a risk, um, 
some 